Good evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We thank and praise God for just allowing us another opportunity to come out to the house of worship. Our scripture for tonight will come from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to you on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 9. It's found in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9 is where we are tonight. 
we're in a month of prayer. Every Wednesday night, we're in prayer. So tonight, we will share a scripture concerning uh, the need to pray, how God answers prayer. And then we will continue in prayer as we, we continue this night. We have a short Bible study, and then we will continue in prayer. Amen? Amen, and bless the name of Jesus. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. <clears throat> I'm reading from New King James Version. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. When you found it, you discovered these words. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts or whose heart is loyal, loyal to him. For the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. King James would say it like this, for the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself mighty to those <coughs> whose hearts are turned toward him. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth the whole earth to show himself strong, uh, show himself mighty, or to show himself powerful on behalf of those whose heart is turned toward him, or whose heart is loyal toward him. You gotta be loyal. You must be loyal. Then he finishes off this verse with a declaration that we don't really want to hear. He says, in this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. We're going to deal with that first part, the first part of that verse. The eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, throughout the whole world, looking for somebody searching for somebody, examining the world for somebody that he can show himself mighty through or he can show himself strong through. And then he comes back and says, in this you have not done well. You actually have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you will have continual fighting, continual wars. You know, oftentimes when we talk about wars, we look at the fact that there's a prediction in Matthew chapter 24 that toward the end of the world, there will be wars and rumors of wars. I just want to say to you tonight that there's always been wars. From the days of Cain and Abel, from the days of Adam and Eve, there's always been fighting. Who was the first person that got killed that we know of? Cain, okay. Abel. Abel. Abel was the first person to get killed, right? That we know of, right? We know that he was the first person to get killed because Adam and Eve had two sons. There was Cain and there was Abel. And Cain got upset. Why did Cain get upset? Because when you have war, sooner or later, somebody's going to get upset, right? In order for a, a, a war to kick off, somebody got to get upset. In order for a killing to happen, somebody's going to have a problem. So what? tell me about Cain and Abel. You had Adam and Eve that was walking with God. God used to walk in fellowship with Adam in the cool of the day. He would talk to Adam. Adam would talk to him. They had a great relationship. They had a great time and fellowship. But one day the serpent shows up. The serpent says, hey, 
If you eat of this tree, you won't surely die, but you will become as a god. He's talking to who? Adam. He's talking to Eve, right? He's talking to Eve. You won't surely die, but God knows you will become a god like him. He says, go on and eat. He said, it's good to look upon. It is good to taste. And it is good to make you wise. Check this out. Those three things have been in existence from that point on. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. So the devil going to get you. He's going to get you in one of these three ways. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, or the pride of life. He said, go and eat. Go ahead and eat. There won't be a problem. God just don't want you to eat because you're going to become like him. So what did Ms. Eve do? She ate. What else did Ms. Eve do? She gave it to Adam. What did Adam do? He ate it. Why did Adam do that? Just because she did that? <laughs> oh, now the women, the women want to say, no, nah, he didn't stand up and be a man. No, he didn't. But check this out. They can say that Adam didn't stand up and be a man, but every time a man stand up to be a man, then they'll remind you that Kunta couldn't take, put his foot down, and he got it cut off. <laughs> so they want to talk about how Adam didn't stand up to be a man. But now when brothers try to stand up and be a man, what happened? Sister Brown, what are some of the things that happen these days when brothers try to stand up and be a man? I don't know. She doesn't know. I don't know what happened to her. What happens when a man tries to stand up and be a man? Does the man get a pause? A pause because he's standing up to be a man? He gets applauded. Does he get a part of 10% of the time or 90% of the time? <laughs> so nowadays, the sister was saying that Adam wasn't standing up and he wasn't being a man. He wasn't following God's instructions. He wasn't following God's instructions. That's a, that's a Holy Ghost field answer there. <laughs> that's a Christian answer. So he wasn't following God's instruction. So here's Adam, here's Eve. Then the devil shows up in the form of a serpent, right? He convinces Mrs. Eve to eat. Mrs. Eve convinces Adam to eat. And therein we have sin entering the world. And when sin enters the world, then all this other stuff that we deal with today enters the world also. We have, we have burglaries. We have murders. We have wars. We have gossip. We have uh, abuse. We have disappointment. All that happened because y'all said that Adam wasn't standing up to be a man. If you notice, sin didn't enter the world until Adam messed up. Because God made Adam the deal, right? And Adam said, no deal. He said, this is the deal. And then Adam says, no deal. So peer pressure has been pure and peer for a long time, right? There was pressure put on Eve by the serpent. There was pressure put on Adam by Eve. And there was pressure put on Adam by God. Yes? So God began to do some things. He says, now Eve, because you have eaten, then you're going to have pain when you have a baby. Then he says, Adam, because you have eaten, you're going to live by the dust of the ground. You're going to live by the sweat of your brow from now on. you got to work. Boy, that tells me that Adam had a cush job. All Adam had to do was celebrate God. All he had to do was fellowship with God. And he messed around and let sin enter into the world. He was convicted, and once he was convicted, and this is a bad way to be convicted. Once he was convicted by the serpent and Eve, then sin entered into the world. And since God made the deal with Adam, it wasn't in the world until Adam ate. 
He did what you want to do. Then Adam did it. And then sin came in. Because the deal was made with Adam, right? Look at Adam. I have a tree. It sits in the midst of the garden. I'm not going to move my tree. I'm not going to put a fence around my tree. I'm not going to set my tree anywhere else. I'm going to leave my tree where it is. And Adam, whatever you do, do not eat of this tree. Because the day you eat, you will surely, surely, surely die. And men, women, boys and girls have been dying every, every since. Ever since Adam did. So war has taken place. We got major wars going on right now. By the time we think we can see light in one war, another one drops off. And then the first one begins to intensify. By the time we move troops in, by the time we move ammunition in, by the time we move tanks in, then we find out the tanks never made it. Ammunition never got there. I'm telling you, we got wars going on. We got wars in Congress, got wars in households, got wars in the state, got wars in the school system. We got wars, wars, and wars. When you look at the text in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, we find ourselves in this position because, as Sister Brown said, we did not obey God. When you look at verses 7 through 10, you will find out that the fact of the matter is king, the king, the person in charge, depended on other folk and he didn't depend on God. We're talking about prayer, our prayer life. Our prayer life ought to be a life that depends on God. It says that there was a seer named Hananiah. What's a seer? What's a seer? What does it call it in your book? In chapter, chapter 16, verse number 7. Hananiah. My book in New King James says that he was a seer. What does it call it in your version? A seer. What's a seer? What's a seer? One day a preacher said, now look, I'm gonna tell you something. Life for you is not gonna be good. A few days later, guy got sick, passed away. He was off the scene. The preacher shows back up at the church. The guy gets out of his car, walks around to the car and said, hey Reverend, are you a seer? What's a seer? Seer. What's a seer? Give, give me a stab at it. Tell me what's a seer. Yeah. Somebody that can see the future. Someone who can see the future. Maybe. Well, these seers were considered considered uh, spiritual. So, so prophet or seer, somebody who can foretell the future. And see, today's prophets, they prophesy all good things. Have you ever seen a, a, a prophet today that prophesies something bad? Only time they prophesy something bad is when it's personal to them and they mad with you. Today's prophets. These prophets prophesied something bad when they people when the people went against God. Today's prophets prophesy something bad when the people go against them. Yes? Because you mistreated me, God don't get you. But the prophets of old, they prophesied to men, women, boys, and girls when they went against God. So the seer, Hananiah, he was a seer. And he went to the king of Judah, whose name is Asa. He goes to Asa. And he said to Asa, because you have relied on the king of Syria, something will happen to you. Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on your Lord, your God, therefore the armies of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. He says, now you relied on them, and now they're not in your hand. Now they're not there to support you. You took, you took a chance on them. And they're no longer around. 
It says, you rely on them more than you rely on God. How many times in our prayer, and in our prayer life, do we rely, we rely on men more than we rely on God? Have you ever heard somebody praying and talking to God, then they stop talking to God, start talking to the, talk to the people? I mean, in the middle of the same prayer, they will say something like, y'all don't know what I'm going through. In the middle of their prayer, talking to God, as if those who are listening can do something about their problem. Am I the only one that noticed that when people pray, sometimes they stop talking to God and start talking to men? So Hananiah says this. He says, you have put your trust in the king of Syria. And you did not put your trust in God. And because you put your trust in the king of Syria, now you looked up and that arm is no longer in your hand. Wow. Now in the middle of battle, you need somebody to support you, right? We've been sending billions and billions of dollars of ammunition over toward Ukraine. Because you need an ally when the bully is bullying you, yes? But if Ukraine is putting their hope and their trust in the United States of America, sooner or later they're going to realize that the United States of America got her own problems. Do we have any problems in the great U.S. of A? A little bit? few? One or two? A lot? We got our own problems in this great United States. And guess, guess what? If we continue to send weapons over, guess what? We're not going to have enough for ourselves. So they are depending on us. We have to depend on God. He says, you have not relied on the Lord your God. When we pray, we ought to pray to God. We ought not pray. Back home, the, the senior saints and the deacons used to pray like this. Lord, I'm coming for no shape, form, or fashion. They used to pray, Lord, I'm not coming for any outside show. Lord, I'm coming to you, Father God, because I know you can do it. And that's how we have to pray. We have to pray unto the Lord himself. And when we pray unto the Lord, we need to pray and rely on him to deliver. I found out the doctors will let you down. Matter of fact, I found out the doctors will tell you what you want to hear. And they will also tell you the worst case scenario. So you can't go with what the doctor says. You have to put your trust in God. You have to rely on him. I've learned that attorneys won't tell you the truth. I learned that attorneys will take your money. And then when you approach one, they'll tell you point blank. Now, you got to give them $7,500 just to get started. This is a major case. How many of you know every case is a major case? <laughs> every case on the attorney starts from $3,000 to $7,500, $10,000. Mm -hmm. One really got upset with me when I said, look, baby, save your money. He's guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lawyer said, he is as guilty as sin. If you give me your fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, I can't guarantee you I can get them off. But that's not that. Well, ma'am, do you think he did? I know he did. Well, I can't get them off. <laughs> but she went through everything she could to get that fifteen thousand. And he's still sitting out there. The lawyer is fifteen thousand dollars. The good thing about that lawyer, he told her. I have come to the conclusion, not conclusion, that not only would the doctor lie to you, the lawyer will lie to you. I've come to the conclusion that your neighbors will lie to you. I've also come to the conclusion that your buddies will lie to you. 
So when we pray, we ought to depend on God. We ought to call on Him. We ought to put our reliance in Him. We ought to put our abilities that we have in Him. We ought to depend on Him. Amen. Look at verse number 8. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 8. For the Ethiopians in the Lubyan, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen. The seer is still talking. What's the seer now? A prophet. A prophet. A prophet. He, he's, he's. Now the seer has stopped prophesying and began to ask a question. Now he's beginning to reason with Asa. He's beginning to reason with her. He asked the question, were the Ethiopians and the leaders not a huge army with very many chariots and horses? Now he's painting a picture of when you got things against you. He painted a picture that when your back is against the wall, he asked a rhetorical question. Didn't they have a large army? Didn't they have a lot of people? Didn't they have a lot of horses? Didn't they have a lot of chariots? And so he goes on and asks the question. Yet, because you rely on the Lord, he delivered them into your hands. Check out what he says. First of all, you relied on the Syrian army and they did not benefit you. Then, when you were faced with a different army, you relied on the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He delivered you and delivered them into your hands. What is he talking about when he says delivered them into your hands? What does that mean? It means that Asa and Judah won the battle. How many of you have used that phrase before? The battle is not mine, it is the Lord's. The battle is not mine, it is the Lord's. I've used that phrase. We've heard the song. Yolanda Adams sings this song. The battle is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. We sing the song, but do we believe it? If it's the Lord's battle, then why don't we let the Lord fight his battle? That's right. It's not our battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. You know there are some people, even in church, that will pick up a fight that doesn't even involve them. Mm -hmm. Some people will get into it with other people in a fight that doesn't even involve them. And we talk about it's the Lord's battle. If it's the Lord's battle, let the Lord fight the Lord's battle. We just in the midst of the battle, but let God fight the battle. <coughs> the battle belongs to the Lord. So, so the seer is still talking. And we said the seer is somebody that can foresee the future, right? The seer asking questions, then the seer began to make a statement. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. How many people looking forward to God to deliver our enemies into our hands? How many of you relying on the Lord to, to save you from your enemy? To deliver you from your enemy? How many of you have come to a conclusion that I just can't do it on my own? We just get in God's way, don't we? Mm -hmm. we? We just get in God's way. We we just keep moving and getting in God's way. We think we're smart. We think we're intelligent. We know our heart is in the right place. How many of you found out that everything that's good to do is not a godly thing? Everything that is is good. It may help other people, but everything that is good is not of God. It may be a good thing. And we are encouraged to feed the hungry. The hungry. We are encouraged to give clothes to those who, who are naked. 
But if I gave one dollar every time I stopped at the corner of the Beltway and Fundry, mm. it would clear out my bank account. Okay, right. To the same man that's been there for 10 years. <laughs> he stopped dragging his feet now. He stopped holding up the sign now that says, have cancer, please help. He doesn't even do that anymore. Now he shows up with a cup. And he goes, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro. He got his cup out. Don't you know that everything that is good is not of God? I can't count the dime that I've given and some people would say, I'm judging. But you know, if he had cancer, wouldn't he have some problems in his body by now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, he was, if he was being eaten up by cancer, don't you think the cancer would have made him lose weight by now? True. Or the cancer would have swollen him up by now? Mm -hmm. For 10 years. Yes. Maybe more for 10 years. The same guy been on the same corner, and guess what, brother? Now he owns that corner now. Mm. Just like I would be bankrupt if I gave him a dollar every time I went back there, his bank is probably full. Mm. Everything that is good to do is not godly. That's why you have to listen to the God, the Spirit of God, and let Him teach you and show you. He says, you relied on the God that you serve. You relied on the Lord, the self-existing God. And he delivered. He made a difference. He delivered you in a positive way. He, you relied on him, and he delivered them into your hands. God delivers. God makes a difference. So when we pray, we ought to pray to God. When we talk to anybody, we ought to talk to God. We ought not be talking to social media more than we talk to God. We ought not be talking to family members and friends more than we talk to God. Used to, I used to hear the old saints grunt. They used to say, oh, Lord have mercy. They would move and they said, Lord, Lord have mercy. You would give them some bad news, they said, Lord have mercy. Before they give you their opinion, they would call on God. And I believe they would honestly call it on God. Yes. God help me. God strengthen me. God make a difference. But we like to call on other folks first. And sometimes I understand you want somebody just to hear you then. I got it. I'm with you. I know it. But when the rubber meets the road, you're going to have to call on God. And when you call on God, you, once you get started, you just you shouldn't be able to stop. I mean, once you get in fellowship with God, I remember one time a uh, brother and I rode up to, to visit somebody in the prison in Kansas City, Missouri. We got a hotel, we spent the night there, and that morning before we went to the prison, he got up and went for a walk, and I stayed in the room, and I was just journaling and writing down what God was speaking to me, reading and writing. I mean, that was an awesome time, awesome fellowship, just to spend quality time with God. How much time are we spending with God? How much time are we calling on Him more than we call on other people? I said, well, why, why do you say, Lord, have mercy when things... Well, because if the Lord doesn't have mercy, then I will be in the same shape. Amen. Yeah. It's, it's God's mercy that we are not enjoying. Right. Right. Leviticus says his mercy is new every morning. That's right. So guess what? If he woke you up today mm -hmm. and he wakes you up tomorrow, mm -hmm. you can't count that as the same thing nor the same deliverance nor the same blessing. Because his mercies are new every morning. And the reason why you have to conclude that his mercies are new every morning is because he did not have to wake us up this morning. Somebody could have been calling the carnal for us. 
Somebody could have had flashing lights outside of their door. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have been told, we got to wait till the doctor show up to declare them gone. Mm -hmm. You know, many times when the, when, the, when, the, when the ambulance pick up people from home, they're already gone. Mm -hmm. But it's just not good taste to tell you right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. So they, the news come out and says, dead or alive. But you were actually dead before they left. It's just not good taste, you know. And plus, they, they got to make that trip. So if we don't make the trip, we need to take somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Just, just being a little honest with you, that's all. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to make the trip, I had a family member to pass out and, and, and actually die. The animals called the wife and said, hey, we, we, he's gone, but, but we can take him. Why, why am I going to pay you to take him when the, when the undertaker can come take him? That's right. It's not the case. It, it's, it's not tasteful to let somebody lay there, right? But the fact of the matter is, we have to call on God. We ought to be calling on, we ought to be praying, and we ought not wait to January to pray through the year. We ought to pray, and we ought not wait to 9-11 to have a 9-11 prayer. You know what happened 9-11? Mm -hmm. After the bombing of the, the trade centers, people all over the world mm -hmm. gathered, I mean, you couldn't get in churches. Mm -hmm. People were in churches, I think it was a Tuesday night, People were packing in church, not even for Bible study. They were just packing in there and churches opening up just for people to come and pray. I'm telling you, there was a prayer going on. So why did people pray after 9-11, the day of 9-11? Why? Why was there so much prayer going on? There are several reasons, right? Tell me why. Why people had a notion to pray then? One person. Fear. fear. What was the fear? Things were going to get worse. Oh, they figured that if they figured if they flew planes into the trade center, they flew planes into the Pentagon or wherever. They flew planes and tried to take out the Pentagon, and they they thought they were coming to our neighborhood, right? What's the other reason people were coming for prayer? We were praying God turn those planes around, <coughs> stop the bombs, stop the war. What was the other reason people were flocking to church to pray? Hoping they find somebody alive and alive. Some of them alive. Say it again. Hoping they find people alive. Praying that God helped them to find people still alive. What was another reason they were praying at 9 11? Why were churches so packed that Sunday? 9 11. Well, we could have paid the church off that Sunday. Why were people flocking in there on that Sunday? Then they went to another Sunday. By the time the third Sunday got there, yeah, the fear was gone. I would say they were there to, uh, thanking God, praying pray to God. For and there. thanking God that some people, some people were still living, some of us were still here, so that's, that's worthy of thanking God. And check this out. There were some people who worked in the trade center right here in Houston, and they either took a sick day or they missed their flight that morning. God in that That's enough to thank God. Mm -hmm. yeah. There were interviews all over Houston, all over the United States, where people were scheduled to be in a meeting in that building. That's right. And guess what happened? They missed it. They missed it. <laughs> That's enough to thank God. Turn around and go get the phone. That's enough. Some people left some at home, turn around and go get it, and they got to late work that day, they got to work late that day, and it was a blessed thing. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us again. Yes. And that's why we ought to pray. We, we ought to pray for Thanksgiving. We ought to pray to, to honor God. We ought to pray for fellowship with Him. We ought to pray because He's delivered us. We are afraid because we just like being in the presence of God. 
There are two things that protect you in the presence of God like nothing else. Number one, his word, and number two, prayer. It puts you down right in the presence of God. So the seer, the seer says to Asa, he said, now look, Asa, God has proven himself before. That's another reason we ought to pray. We ought to call on the one who has proven himself before. And he keeps proving himself over and over and over and over again. God keeps proving himself over and over and over again. He proves to us that we can rely on him. He proves to us we can depend on him. He keeps proving to us over and over again that we need to call on him. But there are two things that will not get you big crowds. First thing that won't get you a big crowd in church is a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, he they ain't doing nothing but praying out there. No sense. I pray at home. The first thing that will not get you a big crowd is there a prayer meeting that's going on. The second thing that won't get you a big crowd is evangelism. We're going to shut the church down this Sunday and we're going to hit the streets and we're going to evangelize. Oh, I ain't doing that. It's either too hot, too cold, or I got something else to do. Or we're going to show up on Saturday and we're going to hit the streets. Or we have a, a moment that we're going to just go to the mall in the comfort of the mall and share Christ. Those two things will not get you a big crowd. What are some of the things that will give us a big crowd? Parties. A party. A party gives us a big crowd. Musical. A musical. Even in church, I mean, musicals get you a big crowd. And when you take up the offering after a musical, you have 500 people in the room and you may have $200. Mm -hmm. But the crowd that shows up in Bible study, the crowd that shows up at Sunday school, the crowd that shows up at worship, that's where you get your getting from. Yes. Spiritual people do spiritual things. Spiritual people do spiritual things. And it's not enough just to be spiritual. You have to be walking with God. So he says, let me remind you that when you trusted God, when you depended on God, Asa, God delivered your enemies into your hand. Verse number 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who are loyal to God. On behalf of those whose hearts are turned toward God. This is one of the key scriptures for Turning Hearts Ministries. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to find somebody whose hearts are turned toward him that he can show himself mighty through, show himself strong through. God is looking for somebody who he can depend on. He's looking for somebody who depends on him. Because if he finds somebody who depends on him, he knows he can depend on them to show themselves mighty by way of God. God wants to show himself mighty through us. Well, we grumbling, we complaining. We, oh, I wish I had it this way, and I wish I had that. You can't show other people mighty in the mighty God you serve, and God can't show himself mighty through you if every time you look up, you complaining and groan. Church folk, Christian folk, saints of God, God is looking for you to show your, God is looking for you to show himself mighty through you, but he can't do it if you always complain. What we don't have, what we can't do. Whenever somebody comes to me and says, well, Pastor, 
I, I don't think we can make that happen. I don't think God's going to help us. In. Well, what if he does? What should we do if God does help us? What, would she, what should we do if we don't know that God is going to help us? We should move as if we know God is going to make it happen. Amen. Faith walkers. We have to be faith walkers. We have to walk in faith. So God, the eyes of the Lord, this word eyes means the favor of God. This word eyes means the countenance of God. This word eyes means the knowledge of God. This word eyes means the regard of God. And this word eyes means the presence of God. Again, the word eyes means God's countenance. God's countenance, his favor, his knowledge, his regard, his presence is looking to and fro throughout the whole earth to find somebody he can show himself mighty through. Now God doesn't need us to show himself mighty through us. But God is looking for somebody he can show himself mighty through. God is looking for somebody. And, and look at the extent that God is going through. For the eyes of the Lord First of all, are running to and fro. He's looking for somebody he can show himself mighty to. Someone that will pray to him and trust him. Someone who will stand for him and witness for him. God is looking for somebody to show himself mighty to. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro, to and fro throughout the whole earth. Everywhere. God is looking for a creation that he's created that he can show himself mighty through that person. God wants to show himself strong. That's what he did with Job. Job had to go through all kinds of trouble, but after he finished the trouble, after he totally relied on God, then God gave him double for his trouble. And when God was able to look at the devil and say, that's Job, and Job stood the test of time. Did not curse God. He kept focus, and God was able to show himself mighty to him. Show himself strong on behalf of those who are hearts are loyal toward God, whose hearts are turned toward him. In our prayer time, we need to make sure that we don't pray amiss, that we pray with our hearts turned toward God. And the only way for us to have our hearts turned toward Him is that we are with Him, that we know Him, that we understand Him. The eyes of the Lord gives us favor. The eyes of the Lord gives us knowledge. The eyes of the Lord, the Lord's countenance blesses us. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself. And you got to remember, God is trying to show himself. God is not trying to show us. We ought to be on planet earth so we can show others who God is. Amen. And show others how strong and how mighty God is. Show others how powerful God is. The eyes of the Lord is running to and fro throughout the whole world, throughout the whole earth, to show himself mighty through you. Can God depend on you? Amen. And the only way God can depend on you is that you rely on him. Mm -hmm. The door of the church is open. If we're going to rely on God, we got to do it through Jesus Christ. Amen. The door is open. We can't rely on God unless we trust Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, the only begotten, the only one of a kind, the only unique Son of God who died on Calvary. Jesus the Christ gave his life for you and me. And we have to turn our lives over to him. You can do that tonight just by believing the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. 
that Jesus died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he rose from the dead. The Bible says you can trust this story, you can believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. If you never trusted him, this is a good time to trust him. He will give you faith. Believe that Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. Invite him into your life. That you can be saved and God can depend on you to show God's mightiness, his mighty power in you. If you want to be born again, say tonight, if you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, if you want to, to go to heaven, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe that you're born again if you're honest and pray this prayer, believing and trusting that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. I say to you, continue in prayer with us on tonight as we are praying and lifting our prayers before God, thanking God for another year and watching over us all last year and that God has blessed us and we, we appreciate that God has continued to bless us. All this month we'll be on Wednesday night in prayer with a short Bible lesson and then we will go in prayer and we're asking you to go in prayer along with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being with us on tonight. If you want to give to our church, you can do so by giving by way of sale. Our sale account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us. Please join us every Wednesday night for Bible study and prayer at 715. Join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and Sunday Sunday at 10.30 a.m. for worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue to pray for those on our prayer list. We'll continue to pray during the month of, of January. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to lift us in prayer, and we will do the same for you. God bless you, and God keep you in this outplay.